He was one of the first whistleblowers in the phone hacking scandal, a reporter and editor at News of the World who knew all about the snooping and surveillance at Rupert Murdoch's tabloid. He understands the Fleet Street culture and at times has defended it. Paul McMullen joins me now from London. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you didn't engage in any phone hacking yourself, but you certainly knew about it. Uh, went along with it, I guess one could say. Is it morally wrong yeah. for journalists to tap into the voicemail of uh, some celebrity or royal family member? Um, well, I've always said no. Um, my argument is, um, you know, if you want to have a free uh, democracy and an open society where politicians behave well, you've got to have a press that is allowed to stray into the area of the dark arts, i.e. not the a legal area, to catch people out because fundamentally you don't go to a politician and say hello I'm a news of the world reporter are you fiddling your expenses are you having an affair with your secretary while presenting yourself as a happily married man uh, you've got to be cleverer than that you've got to catch them so I think um, that that's the public interest defense that um, sometimes it's in the best interest of the country to have I mean, after all, who polices the police and who polices our politicians if it isn't a free press? And but I think but if, very if journalists, however aggressively, are going to try to police politicians uh, and the police and other segments of society, don't they also have a responsibility to obey the law? Um, they do, and this is it's where the argument falls down if you look at the sort of day-to-day uh, -day fodder of who was hacked. I mean, it's people like... Uh, Hugh Grant and uh, Kylie Minogue and Nicole, well, sorry, uh, big American stars also, but when they were in the UK. Um, and how do you justify that? Well, I think the only justification for that is that it allows the newspaper, the News of the World, to be the biggest selling English language newspaper in the world. When I was there, oddly working for Piers Morgan, who was my first boss, we sold more than 5 million copies a week with 12 million readers, which was a substantial part of the you know, adult population of the country. So every couple of months we did something worthy. We had a, you know, Pakistan cricket scandal. We caught a politician uh, with his trousers around his ankles while getting voted in as a happily married man. <laughs> uh, and so every couple of months, um, five million people bought that and 12 million people read that. And so the important stories have massive power that they wouldn't okay. otherwise have had. Obviously, it look, it obviously these techniques look very different when they're employed against ordinary people who are not celebrities, uh, who are not famous athletes, who are not members yeah. of the royal family. But um, you mentioned Hugh Grant. His phone was hacked by News of the World. He is suing. You had a chance encounter with him a few months ago, which he wrote about, and he actually taped your conversation. Let me play a little bit of that for our viewers. Do you think it's right the only person with a decent scout these days is the government? Whereas 20 years ago, we all had a go. I mean, are you comfortable that the only people who are listening to you now uh, are, you know, in my, in my five or six? But, but just celebrities themselves, you would justify because they're rich? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't like it, you just got to get off stage and we'll do one more. Uh, if you don't like it, just get off the stage. So you don't believe that uh, celebrities have uh, any right to privacy at all, it sounds like. Um, well, fundamentally, I mean, if you hire a publicist and ask him, can you get me in the movies in any way possible? Can you get me in the ma magazines in any way possible? And can you get me in the newspapers in the most favorable possible way? I think you kind of lose your, certainly you lose the public backing for when you start whinging, oh, someone's only got paid five million pounds for the last movie and someone's <laughs> listening to our messages. So I think nine out of 10 people who work hard and only take home 250 pounds a week in Britain would happily have their messages hacked into to do two months work and get paid five million pounds. So in light of your views so, on this, I, Paul McMullen, why did you decide to blow the whistle and go public about the phone hacking at News of the World? Well, it's a, it's a good question, actually. Um, first of all, I mean, Sean Hoare, who's now sadly dead, he did crack under the pressure and he did drink too much and died just last week. Now, he started it and it was presented... I. I um, pretty well. I, was just, I just bought a bar in the south of England about nine months ago, which is where Hugh Grant taped me, and I was sort of semi-retiring from journalism, and um, The Guardian presented it as a fantastic story. It was the British Watergate, and I was offered the chance to be part of it, and the whole point was to, if we can label our former bosses, Rebecca Brooks, Andy Coulson, who are both now arrested, as you know, not exactly criminal masterminds, but certainly engaged in uh, a media empire where criminality was rife. And if that media empire 
molded, shaped, and got elected, David Cameron elected as the British Prime Minister, that's a good story. I, I, have I, to I, have a break. I have a break coming up. Since you mentioned Rebecca Brooks, since you mentioned Andy Colson, both former editors of News of the World, you have any doubt that they knew the phone hacking was going on at that paper? No, I have no doubt whatsoever. And it's only, um, I've got to say, Piers Morgan was also my editor. But in that time, in 1994-5, it wasn't illegal. You could just sit outside someone's house and tap into their phone conversations and record all of it and also look at their messages. I mean, I, I need to ask a lawyer, actually, is it legal for uh, a wife to hack into her husband's phone if she thinks that he's cheating? Because, you know, about 10 percent of the population of Britain have probably done that, too. All right. Well, it's we're, we're going to keep our focus stories. on journalists. Uh, Paul McMullen, thank yeah, you for sure. coming in and good luck with the pub now that you've gotten out of journalism. Right. We appreciate it.